Residents of West Maui in the areas unaffected by the Lahaina fire say they've felt trapped this week, lacking access, communication, and supplies for the thousands of residences and businesses still standing. Past the destruction of this area of Lahaina, around the edges and beyond were untouched by fire, but their residents were stranded nonetheless. Nothing burnt down north of the post office, which is like, you know, Kanapali, Honokawai, uh, Mahina, Kahana, uh, Napili, Kapalua. So nobody wanted to leave to get supplies and then go to a shelter on the other side when their house was still standing. They're struggling without power and dwindling supplies, and many tell us officials have instructed them all week it's a one-way trip if they leave. They're saying that if we head out to uh, Wailuku area, they're only letting people that have flights to leave, uh, tourists and locals to leave, and if you go out, you're not going to be able to come back in. I also heard that if you leave, you won't be able to come back in. But according to the area council member, there are plenty of livable homes. There's a lot of second homeowners in West Maui that haven't. Um, the houses are still standing. It would be great if they open up their second home to our residents. The road past Ma'alaya reopened briefly for the first time midday Friday before closing again after a fatal accident and another closure following an MPD threat to follow the rules or else. When the road was briefly open, there were overnight curfew restrictions and passage limited to those proving West Maui residency. I'm asking officials, will they assure West Maui residents the freedom to come and go on this route? Going up and around north is not practical on a mass scale. West Maui from Kahakulo way is treacherous, um, especially with people exiting that way because um, coming in from Kahakulo, it's a one lane narrow road and you're on the cliff side. As for now, here's what West Maui is living with and without. So we don't have any stable communication. We don't have any electricity. On the north side, we still have water. In Lahaina Town, there isn't really water. I think there's one hydrant that's working um, in Lahaina. And there are parts of Lahaina still standing. A lot of Hawaiian homes is still there. The Nahale Kapunakea subdivision is still there. I, I saw um, Kahoma Villages look like it was still standing. Some buildings of Opukea might still be there. Lahaina Gateway looked like it was still standing and intact, and across the street, um, Panda Express, Walgreens, Starbucks, all of those um, were still standing. The top of Lahaina Luna Road above the bypass, which hasn't burned. She says security in the surviving neighborhoods is a major concern. I've spoken with folks that came across looters, people trying to rob houses, businesses, and things like that. And I had some family members where their house was still standing and they were concerned about looting. And so they took some of the back roads into Lahaina around um, the police blockades and they kind of, you know, stood their ground at their homes and, and now they're, they're kind of developing hubs. Looting is something folks up the west side fear too. It's scary and crazy because, you know, we're, they're shutting off our water as well. So I know it's going to get, you know, people are going to start maybe even, you know, breaking into stores just to get things that we need because water is essential for, for these times. The council member organized a grassroots hub at Napili Park to help meet essential needs. And they had the generator with lights running because we we're trying to man it 24-7 so that there's not like looting and stuff. She says if convoys of supplies get through, please no more used clothing. But they do need bottled water and non-perishable food, baby supplies, new undergarments, gas and fuel. The challenge is getting those resources to the areas that haven't got, gotten them yet. Gina Mangieri, KHON2 News, working for Hawaii.